Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you and today we're going to do something that's a little different. We are going to take the 720 Dell chassis there and the 3 par and the NetApp disk arrays and we're going to create a Chai Network cryptocurrency platform. Now before we start going through this, I have to prepare this hardware so that it can take and work and do what needs to be done in regards to it being able to handle and process the Chai cryptocurrency footprint. Now the Chai cryptocurrency footprint is basically they take increments of about 315 gigs roughly uh, a little bit more actually I think I believe and they create these node endpoints that uh, can be data nodes that can replicate with other sites who are doing the similar thing and they can turn around and produce cryptocurrency by pr using that service in a encrypted state for a variety of different opportunities. So the cool thing about that is it's another working currency. Now, Bitcoin is not a working currency. Bitcoin is just a value currency. Um, there are many other currencies that work with cash tokening, uh, application noting, and several other variations out there in regards to getting yourself set to a point where you're good to go. Now, as you can see here, I've got a three part and I got myself a NetApp platform running on an LS9200 uh, 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 HBA node based footprint. And in the back, you will see that the LSI was configured for baseline and config. And that's right here where I have a single node output coming from the three par and I have a single node coming from the actual NetApp disk array. Now, the problem with that is that's not going to be good. I'm going to have to flip over to the secondary channel here and put that unit in its proper sequence as well as bring in its back loop. So I have my failover pathways, which is this guy right here. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I am preparing my chassis to begin to see disks and come up in the proper performance array footprint so I'm not mixing these disks and their performance levels which are 10,000s with the 15,000s down below in the NetApp platform and this is a, is a dual pathway and this is a single pathway so with that being the case I'm going to go ahead through this video and pre-stage that connectivity so make sure it's working correctly so stand by here for a minute and we'll check into it now, as one other detail I wanted to bring up as I'm beginning the process to post and start the boot process, you'll notice that this is actually a whole heck of a lot of disk. We have the 720's 24-bay disk here. We have the 3 par up here. And we, of course, have the Dell unit down here. I'm sorry, NetApp unit down here. So, the secret sauce here is making sure that they're all in their separate channels. So, when you're building performance channels, in other words, you track your disks, how many you've got, how they're functioning, and so on. And as you can look down here, there's quite a few down here as well. Not so many here. Not really. Not yet. So I have plenty of scalable growth, which those would be one terabyte drives in the future as we're going through that process. And it gives us the ability to both segment our bandwidth for our disk speeds on our SAS controllers, as well as keep them isolated on their own channels. So he's on his channel of a single pathway. He's on his channel with a dual pathway and this one of course is an internal SAS platform on the PERC controller. So we have three different environments and two different controller interfaces. Okay, so the next step here is I'm booting up to go into the LSI interface which you can see up here at the top and that's going to allow me to post into the, the LSI computer manager footprint in regards to uh, how my disks are functioning, are they reporting correctly, and so on. So since I've changed the bus setting, as you saw in my video, I want to make sure first that I go in. With this entire video, the whole premise of it is, what do you got to do before you're ready to install you know, the Chai networking uh, client so you can begin setting up your, your actual node for sharing your storage capacity, your unused capacity, that is, for uh, in regards to how you're going to handle your platform and the way you want to handle that platform's function. So 
with that being said, obviously at the same point in time, we're going to also take the time to make sure that our busing, in other words, who's connected where and how are they connected, are teamed well so that any SATA disk is not mixing with SAS disk. That's a very important detail. And with the SAS configuration utility tool, you can segment them away from each other, but by keeping them on their separate cabling pathways, it really makes a big difference. You never want to take two or three disks from one storage array, uh, disk array, uh, shelf and try to use a couple other disks, another shelf, another disk, another shelf, and so on. That you're cross spanning, and you don't want to do that because cross spanning can cause a lot of problems. So, as you can see here, um, we're looking at the ability to configure and see what we've got and to also communicate based on the actual disk solutions which we have out here, as you can see. And um, we also have other disk footprints as well. And this is on one set shelf. And then I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go in here and go down to my topography model here and see what I've got here. And you can see there's quite a few here as well. HPs and ATAs, those are mixes right there. But these are all, um, these are all SASs at this point, the 300 gigers. And of course we've got the 500s, which are breakouts, they're separate. And then we've got our, our terabyte increments here, the 910s, 910s, and of course we'll break back out again. As you can see in the second bus channel, I have a limited number of units out there. Uh, the 450s, these are all 450s, there's a one terabyte footprint there as well, and of course the Toshiba limit. So I'm not really seeing all of my disks here, so that's a problem I'm going to have to troubleshoot because I have nine one terabyte drives right down here. So that's something at which I want to check into. But in this short video, these are the details you want to make sure that you're tracking when you're doing this kind of uh, functional work. You want to make sure that you're seeing everything that's out there and uh, how is it communicating, what's its proper pathways and so on. Um, then once that is done, and of course over here you have a great deal more because you actually have the EGSO 600s, the 1 terabytes, the 500s, the 300s and they keep going all the way up to bay 12. Um, we basically 22 disks are in the equation here and so we can see we have on separate channels my SATAs and of course separate channels again. I remember channels are, you have four channels per SAS cable. So by keeping the SATAs properly contained within channels, you can have different performance levels, but we're not crossing enclosures themselves. This is a separate enclosure. So in this case, you know, we're looking at the platform enclosure up here, and then we're looking down at the NetApp enclosure down here, and how they're gonna communicate correctly with each other through this LSI connect controller to get you to a block of disks which you can start to use. Now, I'm only going to do a sample model here. So with that being said, the sample model will give me the principles that I need in regards to setting up nodes based on performance. I could technically also just build these out as RAID groups and then combine them as an as a extended drive on the OS, which I'm not going to do because that adds a, le a level of complexity that could cost you all your data if you're not careful. So you want to be very careful. All right, so this is my pre-Chai video of what you need to do in regards to working with your platform. And I basically showing you what the expectations are and give you the ability to um, get comfortable with playing around with your disks. Because the key thing about Chai networking is how you pre-plan your hard disks. And remember, it's about capacity, it's about pairing, it's about performance levels. If you're gonna do RAID groups, either in an OS environment or in a more basic hardware format using a RAID controller. But the inevitable goal here is to get your stuff set up first before you turn around and turn it into a Chai storage node environment. That's it for now. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm gonna sign off and there'll be more coming on this down the road. Take care.